Monday, which is yesterday's Standard & Poor's cut the South African government credit rating to that of junk status for the very first time in more than 17 years. This comes after the cabinet reshuffle by President Jacob Zuma last week Friday. The rating agency says the executive changes initiated by President Jacob Zuma have put at risk fiscal and growth outcomes. Addressing the media on Monday, new finance minister Malusi Gigaba said political changes will not influence South Africa's credit ratings. To take this conversation further, we joined in our studios now by Professor Yana Rousseau. He is the head of the School of Economics and Business Science at Verts. Prof, good morning and welcome to Morning Life. Good morning, Padesa, and thank you very much to all the good people in this studio making this program thank possible. Thank you so much for coming through. Now, let's just get a clearer understanding of adjunct status. If you were to bring, us, bring it down for us to get a clearer understanding. In short, a junk status means that investment in the bonds and other instruments in your country would not be regarded as a good quality investment, but a lower quality investment, and hence it would be necessary to pay higher interest on whatever money is borrowed by the country. All right, so I would believe for an ordinary person like me, it, it, it will mean high cost of funding, it would mean um, the weaker rent, perhaps Indeed. high inflation. I want yes. our viewers at home to, you know, to understand the effects of this uh, uh, downgrade. Yeah, indeed, we've already seen that the exchange rate of the rand depreciated. When I last looked this morning, it was at 13 rand 73 against the dollar. Uh, at the beginning of last week, when Mr. Zuma started with these plans, it was at 12 rands 34 to the dollar. So it's a considerable decline. As a result of that, inflation will be higher, as you've rightly said. And with higher inflation will come higher interest rates, and therefore uh, all South Africans will have less money to spend. All right, but personally, were you surprised by this decision by S&P? Because uh, we've heard on Monday the, the new finance minister, Malusi Gigaba, saying that he doesn't think that, you know, a change of an individual can affect this country to this extent. Were you expecting these changes, Prof? Yes, I was expecting a downgrade. I've foreseen the downgrade already last Monday when Mr. Gordon was called back. And if Minister Gigaba indeed said that one person cannot make this change this difference is indeed completely detached from financial markets and then it's time for our finance minister to get an education on how financial markets work and i've also had prof a lot of people saying that this, it was too soon for uh, snp to to go this route uh, the minister obviously saying that as well that he actually met with some uh, agencies uh, with the deputy minister as well well it's not a case of not too soon or not but it's the way in which President Zuma handled this thing. He treated these rating agencies with total disrespect. He treated international investors with total disrespect. He treated the outgoing Minister of Finance, Mr. Gordon, with total disrespect. If you treat everybody with total disrespect when you are a head of state, you have to, respect, you, you have to expect a reaction from the markets. You have to expect a reaction from rating agencies. And if Mr. Zuma didn't foresee this happening, as I did, he is also really detached from financial markets and then he completely doesn't understand economics. What do you think uh, it is likely to happen? Are we likely to see the similar pattern unfolding? I mean, we're expecting Moody to uh, release their credit ratings for us on Friday and with Fitch, we know that they never tell us beforehand which day they will be releasing their ratings. So what do you think is likely to happen? Are we, is this the kind of pattern that we should be expecting? This is the pattern I'm expecting, although in the case of Moody's, we are still too notches about above junk status so they can still downgrade us to one notch above junk status in the case of Moody's in the case of Fitch we are at the junk status grade so if they downgrade us we will also be a junk status and unfortunately the net result of this will be international investors selling South African assets. Prof, talk to us about the long-term consequences of, of, of this uh, credit ratings. The long-term consequences as I've said will be higher interest rates and therefore we will have more pressure on the South African budget. The government's finances will be under more pressure. It will be necessary for the government to raise more taxes. Mm -hmm. So we will see an increase in tax rates to raise more money to pay interest on our debt. And all over South Africa will be an unattractive investment destination for mm -hmm. international investors. We've heard claims about an investment strike in South Africa over a period of time. And if anything, if there was an investment strike, uh, it will even be bigger after this downgrade. But are we likely to recover? This is happening for the very first time in 17 years. Yes, we are likely to recover. Countries always recover. 
if they follow sound fiscal and monetary policy, if they act responsibly, and it takes typically three to five years to recover from such a downgrade. All right, Prof. We'll leave it at it. Thank you so much for coming Thank you, through. Thank All right, that was Professor Yanni Rousseau, head of the School of Economics and Business Science at Vets University, talking to us about what it means for South Africa to be downgraded to junk status, as it was announced yesterday evening by Standard & Poor's.